this is Jill Simonello with Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk. And this week I am in Chicago <laughs> driving the Chevrolet Trax. And coincidentally, Tim Estradal is in Nebraska and he has the same vehicle. So what we wanted to do in this video is do a co-review and tell you what we think about it. And I'm going to issue a little bit of a spoiler alert. We actually agree on most things about this vehicle. That never happens. So you better watch this and see how it goes because you will probably never see us agree again. So to start this off, I'm going to send it over to Tim to talk about the engine and give some driving impressions. So let's take a closer look right now. Okay, this is the 1.2 liter three cylinder engine. You have 137 horsepower, 162 foot pounds of torque and a three cylinder. But here's the kicker. Turbo. Yeah turbo, that makes all of the difference in the world. You may be saying, a three-cylinder car, three-cylinder SUV, I remind you old Hondas and things back in the day, but that turbo, that is the real deal. And made with a six-speed automatic transmission, which means they don't have eight or 10 gears because they don't need them. The six-speed allows me to keep the power band much better. And you'll see in the driving impressions, um, it doesn't suck. Okay, let's go ahead and hit the road with this 2024 Chevy Trax. Put it down in drive and uh, let's see what this 1.2 can do. Whoa, that's a little surprising, and 45. Okay, so uh, kind of peppy off the line. I wouldn't call it like, it's not sporty in that it's a sports car, but it's, it's peppy enough for this size of vehicle. I think the thing is the 1.2 liter sounds like it's, oh, it's so small, it's so tiny. It's turbocharged. Turbocharged makes a hell of a difference. I made the six speed automatic transmission, they allow you to really get those transmission shift points just right. So when you really smash the accelerator, you have more power than you would anticipate. Um, yeah, I think that's totally fine for this type of vehicle. And this price point at $26,000, you know, you got good fuel economy, 32 miles per gallon. I've been averaging that as well. Uh, that's on the highway fuel economy. I have uh, 28 city, 30 combined, a four passenger SUV, uh, $26,000 with the warranty, with good fuel economy. It's kind of hard to beat. Um, from the position of the driver, uh, I can see around me quite well and actually fit well in this vehicle. The screen is pointed towards me. I got good seating position, fairly comfortable seats to a degree. You know, this is not a road trip vehicle. This, again, $26,000, lower price point vehicle. It's gonna be something you're, you're gonna want to buy for like a, a retiree or a college student or somebody. This is not, I wouldn't consider this a full-fledged family SUV vehicle this is just a it's a really good commuter vehicle you can do that as well because again 32 miles per gallon and twenty six thousand dollars wow i could i can see that now is it a little noisy in the cabin sure it's not the quietest cabin i can feel a little road i can hear a little road noise as well but i also have a pretty nice radio i just turn it up let's go see what uh miss chicago thinks about this 2024 chevy tracks all right, I just want to follow up a little bit on what Tim said in his driving impressions because frankly, he's mostly spot on. But I will say there is just a little bit of turbo lag with this engine that is slightly disappointing. So if you are trying to uh, do a quick maneuver, kind of like that, it's a little bit herky-jerky and it's like, you know, oh, am I going? Yes, I'm going. Oh, wow, I'm really going. So. Um, just a little bit of turbo lag, but what can you expect from a three cylinder engine? Um, this is pretty good. I mean, considering that this is a three cylinder engine, this is actually really, really good. So great for a commuter car, pretty good in urban environments, solid in suburban and highway environments, uh, but you just, you just have to know what to look for when you're looking at that turbo lag and understand what to do with it because <laughs> you're probably not gonna wanna turn in front of fast moving traffic. I'm just gonna put that out there for you. But generally comfortable, good visibility out of all the windows. Um, even as somebody who's about five feet tall, um, I still, like this is, this is a very comfortable vehicle. I have a good driving position and I really feel comfortable in this car. Uh, the one thing that I am gonna say, and um, Tim, Tim also called it, even though we didn't take a road trip, he said this is not a road trip car. And that is 100% true. I, did take a road trip. I drove this from Chicago to Indianapolis, back to Chicago. Um, so that's a total of six hours, three three hours um, each way. And uh, 
two and a half or two hours, two hours is about the max that you're going to want to spend in this seat because after that it just gets too hard, too firm and really, really miserably uncomfortable. I started to do, you know, the seat fidget and yeah. So um, commuter car, yeah. Carpool car, maybe. I mean, not really a family car. It's kind of small for that. But definitely commuter car, good starter car, good college car, good, you know, I just need to kick around town car. But road trips, nah. Turbo lag, got to watch out for that. So the other thing that I want to touch on briefly that Tim mentioned is fuel economy. And I've driven a total of, and I've driven a total of 454 miles and my fuel economy is 26.7. So that's just under the, um, <laughs> the, the city mileage of 28 um, miles per gallon and um, definitely a lot more under the um, combined and highway average. And I'm going to tell you, probably 400 of those miles were highway miles. So while Tim was impressed with his fuel economy, I'm not as impressed with my fuel economy, but you do need to keep in mind, I drive a little bit faster and a little bit harder than he does. Take that for what it's worth, but 26.7 miles per gallon is what I'm getting in this car. So let's send it back to Tim and let's talk about the interior because you know what? He's actually right about that too. Okay, let's check out the interior here of the Chevy Trax. Again, active trim, a bit of green styling here, yellow styling. This is what it kind of stands out. You can see more yellow here. That's active trim on the seats. They're kind of uh, like a leather yet kind of seat. Um, got some nice bolstering here, and I got powered seat here on this side. Um, interesting styling here on this active trim. You can kind of see, I'll put my uh, hand on there, that, that kind of bronzy look there. Here is your interior setup. Again, this screen comes right to you, and how Jill, she'll talk more about her screen. She always likes different things in it than I talk about. We have the HVAC system there where the controls. I have the shifter here as well. And then we have the little parking sensor as far as the lane assist control there. Wireless charger, cup holders, little storage bin, and additional storage bin here. There's actually quite a bit of storage room in this little Chevy Trax. Not a lot more than you'd expect. And I love the screen being tilted to me, kind of for the driver focus. You can see a little bit of silver there as well. And uh, yeah, now I am five foot seven, uh, eight on a good day, nine with boots on. <laughs> I'll hop in this. You can see headroom is pretty darn good. And I have a little bit of a sunroof here, but yeah, pretty good and pretty good seam position here behind the wheel. All right, let's throw it to Jill. Talk about the second row seats. All right, let's move it to the back seat. And let's talk a little bit about why Tim says this is probably not a family vehicle. So I'm about the size of your average 10 year old and I fit actually pretty good back here. I have good foot room, I have good knee room and yep, I even have good head room. So 10 year old and smaller will probably fit back here, but that is the extent of the good stuff that is happening <laughs> back here because um, there is a lot of hard plastic on the door panels and this does not flip down for an armrest. There aren't any cup holders back here. There are some bottle holders in the door, but yeah, don't, don't put coffee in there. That would, that would be bad. Um, only things with a cap. So no cup holders, no air vents. So there are no air vents in the headliner. There's no air vents in the B pillar. There are no air vents on the back of the center console. No air vents. So you've got to be very dependent on the people in the front seat blowing the air back here to get some air. What else is not going on back here? There's just not a lot of comfort. So in addition to the hard plastic on the door panels, these seats not really super comfortable. They're actually pretty stiff and I'm going to say they're worse than the front seats. Now the, you do have some latch points kind of hidden in here so you can put some car seats in this space but without air vents why would you do that to a child? I'm just going to say why. So I want to say again I agree with Tim this is much more of an occasional back seat. You can probably fit some taller people back here in an emergency not going to be some place you want to put people for a really long time and definitely you know without air vents you don't want to put children back here um, and just the general material discomfort makes this not necessarily a family vehicle but before I send it back to Tim I do want to take it to the front seat and just take another little look there because there's some good stuff going on that Tim did not point out 
All right, keeping in mind this is a $26,000 vehicle, I am super impressed with these screens. So this is a digital display, but it's not really configurable, and frankly, it doesn't bother me. I like how it looks. But what I'm really impressed with is this screen right here. It is larger than normal, and you have wireless Apple CarPlay. Wireless Apple CarPlay gets a huge thumbs up for me, and I especially like these menu icons over here at the side that allows you to go between Apple CarPlay and your native system pretty easily. So, you know, going into your music, your home screen, whatever you want to do, it allows you to do that pretty seamlessly and very easily. So, all of that is really good stuff. I think the graphics are simple, they're not overdone, and therefore they're not likely to become dated quickly. So speaking of wireless things, that brings me to the wireless charger that actually works. General Motors is one of the only automakers I've found so far that can produce a wireless charger that does not overheat my phone. I had my phone in this charger for three hours three hours and it didn't overheat not to mention the fact not only did it not overheat but it also charged my phone what a novel idea and i was using waves the entire time so i just they did a nice job with this and the fact that you can get this in a twenty-six thousand dollar car and there are some hundred and hundred and fifty thousand dollar vehicles out there that i've driven recently that do not do this that's bad this is good so I don't know, I just am overall really impressed with the interior and what they have done technologically with this vehicle. Again, for $26,000, and that includes the heated seats and the heated steering wheel. So yeah, the tracks on some of this stuff alone just gets a huge thumbs up for me. Okay, now, if I had anything to complain about with the Chevy Trax, it'd be this one simple thing, uh, golf clubs. So you may have noticed my seat is folded down, and the reason for that is very simple. With my golf clubs in here, even though they have a, a little storage bin here, kind of go like this, I can, yeah. So I can kind of get them to fit here, but what kind of a <laughs> pain in the butt. So. Uh, I've been laying them this way, so that you got enough room to go across rollerboards. Uh, if you put bags in there, groceries, things like that, you have no problems. But if you're a golfer like me, hmm, just a bit, a bit of a struggle. Let's go ahead and see what Jill thinks of the rear cargo room. All right, one more thing I want to point out before we leave this cargo area is, um, yeah, let's look under this load floor right here. Um, there's a spare tire. I'm going to give Chevrolet a well done for that because a lot of automakers are not including spare tires on their vehicles. They give you an inflator kit instead. So, hey, Chevrolet Trax has a spare tire. Another point in its favor. As a counterpoint to Tim's golfing comment, I want to say if you are a golfer like me, yeah, you're not going to have any problem fitting your golf clubs back here. And by golfer like me, I mean I'm using junior clubs. So. Yeah, maybe, maybe use Tim as a reference, not me. All right, since we're back here and we're talking about cargo space, um, I do want to say this is actually really good. So I'm just going to shove these back here for a minute and point out that you do have this cover, which is removable. And so you can stack things up to the glass if you like, but you have a really decent usable amount of space. So during a road trip, I was able to put two suitcases and a backpack back here, and I probably could have fit even more. So that's really good. And plus, with a couple of grocery store trips, I was able to fit all of my groceries, and you've got some nice little um, cubbies. I guess I should say a nice little cubby right down here. So if you have like a jug of milk or bottles of wine or eggs or something like that that you don't want rolling around, you can set it in there, and that's really nice as well. So I like the cargo area. The one thing that I'm going to point out that you do not get on a $26,000 car is a power button. So you don't have a power lift gate. You're gonna to have to use your own mound power. And I will say, because this is a smaller SUV, I can actually reach the handhold to put it down. So that'll get a thumbs up. I would spend $26,000 and not have a power lift gate. That doesn't bother me, but just something to know, not on this vehicle. 
One other thing I will point out while we are looking at the rear of the vehicle is the fact that we do not have um, all wheel drive. It is not available on the tracks. So that could also be a bit of a mess. All right, before I send it back to Tim to close out this review, I do want to take a quick look at the exterior of the tracks because I think Chevrolet has done a bang up job with the redesign of this vehicle. And I just want to take a closer look and show some of the details. Now, I don't know if you remember the previous generation tracks, but to me, it looked a little bit comical and it looked a little bit like a bubble. And what Chevrolet has done here is they've sleeked this out and made it look a lot more elegant with more horizontal lines and sharper points. I like the black dot wheels. I like the headlights. I like the tail lights. Frankly, I just like everything about the design of this new Trax. And now Tim and I keep saying that this is a $26,000 vehicle, but what I want to point out is the base price of the active trim is actually just under $24,000. Now this vehicle has added some options. So you do have some blind spot monitoring and you've got the adaptive cruise control and you have the sunroof package. And altogether that rounds out the price to just over $26,000 at $26,540 for this specific vehicle. Overall, I think it is well worth the price and I will send it back to Tim to close out the review. All right, there you go. There's our thoughts on these 2024 Chevy Trax. I don't know about Jill, but I know for myself, I can just see this as a home run for Chevrolet. I really don't have anything that really stands out to me as being a, a negative that would turn me away from buying this. And again, $26,000, 32 miles per gallon, 30 combined. It's hard to pass a vehicle like this at that price point. So for more, check videos over here, website down below as well, pickuptrucktalk.com. As always, we will see you down the road.